Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is chapter three, uh, where we are talking about displaying and describing categorical data. Uh, this is from the Stats Modeling the World uh, curriculum. And uh, we, again, like I said, we're talking about categorical data, how we, how we look at, how we describe, um, everything that has to do with that type of data. Uh, so before we jump straight into it, let's uh, talk a little bit about just data analysis in general. Uh, there are three big rules that you want to follow uh, when you are doing any kind of data analysis, whether it be categorical or quantitative. Uh, the first is that you want to make a picture. Okay, the things that make because when you make a picture, things that may be revealed that are not obvious in the raw data. Right, these will be things that we want to think about. Uh, for example. It could be that uh, one uh, set of the categorical data is uh, proportionally very uh, much larger than another, and seeing that in the numbers can be can be difficult sometimes. Um, if we're talking about quantitative data, uh, we might have uh, a certain number that's been re repeated a lot, and again, we wouldn't we wouldn't always see these things. It just helps us find those uh, those interesting things about the data that we can't just see looking at raw number vomit okay uh, rule number two is we want to make a picture okay it's in the important features of and patterns in the data show up in pictures better than they show up in numbers okay um, you might also see things in the picture that you didn't expect uh, like outliers or something uh, along those lines that don't necessarily show up uh, easily in the numbers Okay, so again, we make a picture. It's important. And then the third rule, if you haven't guessed already, is also make a picture. Because in terms of the way that we want to communicate uh, data, pictures show things better than numbers do. Okay, uh, this also kind of like uh, gives us a th the th three-step process that we want to think about in many of our uh, problems and statistics this year, and that is the think. Uh, show tell steps um, a lot of what we want to do in this course in AP statistics we, we want to kind of follow that format where we think about the situation um, we look at the kind of things that show up and then we uh, we tell uh, communicate those results okay so Specifically with categorical data, uh, we have a couple of different uh, ways that we want to be able to represent it. First of all, we've got frequency tables. And uh, if you watched my Chapter 2 video, you know a lot of what I talk about in terms of categories is that categorical data is like putting things in buckets, right? So here we have um, a bucket. This first bucket has 325. This second bucket has 285 things in it. Uh, this third bucket has 706, and this uh, crew bucket has 885. Uh, this example, by the way, uh, comes from the, the book itself. It's all about uh, the Titanic and Titanic survivors. So here we have 320 people that were in first class, 285 in second, and 706 in third, and 885 in crew. Okay? This type of data is simply a count. We have four different categories, right? That's where the term categorical variable comes from. We have three, four different categories, and each of these categories, we have a count of how many things are in that category. All right? Um, along the same lines, we have what's called a relative frequency table. And notice the only difference is that word relative. Um, and a relative frequency table is really the same thing, but instead of giving a raw count, it gives percentages for each category. So this 14.77 is coming from taking 325, that first count, um, over the total. Uh, so this would be like 325 over the total of all of them added together would make this percentage. Okay. Same with the second, third, and fourth. Uh, this should, when you add them all together, add up to 100%. Uh, or at least very, very close to 100%. There may be a slight rounding error that, com that happens. But um, this should be 100% when you add up everything in a relative frequency table. All right. Um, the both types of tables show how cases are distributed across the categories. Um, this word right here is kind of key. 
uh, where the, they describe what's called the distribution of a categorical variable because they name the possible categories and they tell how frequently each occurs. Uh, we will use this term distribution often and again all it refers to when we say distribution is how do the counts fall right how are the counts distributed amongst the categories right um, we call that a distribution so frequency tables describe the distribution of the categorical variables okay now uh, we use the, the frequency tables are good but they're still just raw numbers uh, we want to be able to use uh, certain types of, of charts and graphs to get there. Before we talk about those specifically, though, we're going to put a, a warning forth here. Okay? That warning being that the way that we create a chart or graph, uh, we can make big mistakes. So there is a problem with this picture over here. This is the data uh, that was presented in those previous tables. And uh, we can see that it's flashy, right? It's cool because it's got the Titanic on there, right? And so that, uh, you know, it's a really, like, um, catchy thing to do if we're trying to describe something. However, uh, this is a really poor distribution. That should be a D. Uh, because it's going to distort the data. This data that's being shown is measuring the length of the Titanic, right? This is the crew data. And this is the third class data, right? We're looking at just the length. That's what we should be looking at when we are looking at these pictures. The problem is that we are looking at the proportional size of the Titanic. And that's an issue because uh, for each one of these, we are distorting exactly how big they are, right? The crew in the third class are, are fairly close together in size uh, proportionally, but this Titanic looks significantly smaller uh, than the other Titanic does. This is something that's called the area principle, okay? And what the area principle says is that um, we are looking at the area taken up by the ship instead of the length of the ship. Because the area is so flashy and so catchy, our eyes are drawn to the area it takes up, not the length that it takes up. Um, and it's, this, is a, this past picture of the Titanic is violating this thing called the, uh, the area principle because our data should, we should look at it in a proportional manner. Okay, uh, the area occupied by a part of the graph should correspond to the magnitude or value that it represents. So it should be proportional to the other counts, right? Areas in a display should always be proportional to their counts. Uh, in general, we need to remember that we're more impressed with area than length, okay? Uh, so we need to make sure that we, we don't distort the data. And we want to keep in mind that 3D charts often break this. Again, in fact, a lot of flashy type charts will break this principle. Um, so it's best to be simple, right? Go simple when you're creating a chart. Otherwise, you have a, a good chance uh, of distorting the data if you don't do so correctly. So here's an example of a, a really poor 3D graph, right? Looking at this graph, uh, we would think that red is the largest. Uh, and then perhaps brown over here, uh, and then probably ooh, um, maybe green next or blue. Like these are all pretty. These ones are all pretty close back here. Uh, but when you actually look at the actual percentages of this, uh, it couldn't be further from the truth. The largest is actually brown. The second largest is green. The third largest is red, um, and then blue, yellow, orange. And so you can see that this drastically breaks this principle, um, uh, the area principle, because we are naturally drawn to this large chunk of the pie that we see here in red, because A, it's in front of us, but B, it's such a big chunk. Uh, however, it's not the largest, and it's, so it's drastically distorting the data uh, that we should be looking at. Okay?
okay? So don't be that guy, right? Don't make these really poor 3D charts. In fact, 3D in general is stupid. It's, it's really difficult to do good 3D text without it looking like a seventh grader made the PowerPoint presentation, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing uh, your PowerPoints or any of your, uh, your data, right? 3D is very difficult to do without distorting data. It is generally best to not do it, all right? That's going to end it for our first section of Chapter 3. We've got uh, a couple more videos to talk about with contingency tables and independence uh, coming up later up on the playlist here. So keep that in mind, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.